Station, it's David Curley, ABC News. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Welcome up to the International Space Station. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel. Um, heard your words on the welcoming ceremony for Crew Dragon. Uh, they were quite touching. What were you hoping to accomplish with what you said as this space capsule arrived at station? You know, when we come up to the International Space Station and we can look back at our Earth, and it's this it's this marrying up of an amazing view of our planet while sitting inside some of the most advanced technology that's ever been developed by humans across the world. And it gives you this perspective of really what we're capable of when we focus on our common interests instead of our differences. Every single day we work with people across the globe who are driven by a passion for exploration and a desire to know, to go beyond uh, where humans have ever gone before. And when you get that perspective, you feel this obligation to share it with people. You feel like if you could just tell everybody, if you could make everybody feel the way that you feel and see the things that you see, uh, we could just do even more amazing things. So the message that I really hope to communicate was to tell everybody like, hey, look what we can do when we really work together. You, that was a first, having a private capsule arrive. Another first is coming, potentially you and Christina out the first all-female spacewalk. Are you thinking about that? Uh, the spacewalks that are coming up, we have three spacewalks scheduled at the end of March and the beginning of April for our uh, uh, for the crew of the four of us. And uh, we're absolutely thinking about the EVAs. We've been preparing for the EVAs, uh, the spacewalks for, uh, for months now. And uh, as we get closer, our first spacewalk is on uh, March 22nd, and the teams are all diligently preparing for it, and, uh, and we are looking forward to it. But it'll be historic. Did you get that? It'll be historic, all female. Uh, yes, the, uh, um, the second one, uh, depending on the outcome of the first uh, spacewalk, the second one uh, right now is uh, scheduled for Christina and myself uh, to continue the, uh, the upgrades on the outside of the space station. Uh, we understand that it is uh, significant uh, historically. I think right now our teams, uh, we have so much to focus on and prepare for up here um, that, uh, that our heads are kind of down, um, but, uh, but we certainly understand uh, the significance of it. And, uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, in the future, uh, it won't be such a surprise to folks. Uh, uh, you know, we, they, uh, NASA certainly doesn't take it into account when making crew assignments. It just kind of happened that way, uh, which in and of itself is probably a sign of, uh, of where we're at. Before I get to David, uh, I talked to Nick Haig. He says he's a rookie now coming up, and you're going to have to show him that any rookie pranks plan that you can tell us about. Well, uh, yeah, we've been talking a lot about uh, tricks for on the ascent. Uh, we're both uh, the kind of co-pilots of the Soyuz, so there's a lot of tricks that we share among among ourselves. Uh, and then, uh, how to prepare really is uh, is the most important. And what why we find we regularly tell people is. Once you get to the space station, there's procedures, there's ground control, there's your colleagues who've been there several months, you'll be okay. What you really have to prepare for is your family, your loved ones, kind of prepare, wrap up things, make sure you leave with no loose ends, uh, because uh, you know you never know what happens here first, and B, uh, it's kind of difficult to manage your life when you're up here. We are really in an extreme place. It doesn't look like here, it's very comfortable, but <laughs> we are on orbit, so you don't want to have to manage your bank account or uh, you know, prepare uh, uh, you know, presents for your kids while up here. It's better to plan all that while you're on the ground. I wondered whether, uh, I wondered whether you were gonna prank him on station, but let's move on. David, you were the first into the capsule, the Dragon capsule. Did you slide into the seat? How did it feel? 
Yeah, so I had the, uh, I just, uh, uh, I guess I pulled the, the lucky straw there and uh, was the first one to open that hatch. Uh, but, you know, as everything we do here, uh, uh, and Anne put it well uh, pre previously, it's kind of a mixture of magic and of just very mundane technicalities. I was focused on getting the steps right because it's a new, whenever you do something new for the first time, you got to get extra focus because it's the first time, right? You're just reading this from procedures or from training. So um, even though it was historic and emotional, we were really heads down making sure we were doing everything step by step correctly. But I had these moments of wow, aha, when kind of the light of the inside and the view of the beautiful cockpit, it kind of looks a bit like a, like a business uh, class <laughs> spacecraft. <laughs> I think we're out of time. Both of you, thank you very much. Maybe she's signing off. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you, CBS News, NBC News, and ABC News Station. We are resuming operational audio comm. Of course, this is a historic moment, capturing the final moments of the astronaut in, astronauts inside the Crew Dragon. You're seeing David St. Jacques on the left in the middle, NASA's Anne McLean, and on the right, the commander of Expedition 58, Oleg Kononenko of Roscosmos. In the middle is the zero-G indicator that uh, was actually flown up on the Crew Dragon after launch and uh, entering into an orbit uh, on its way to the International Space Station, the zero-g indicator, uh, which they are holding now, uh, actually floated up, basically indicating when they were in zero-g, or microgravity environment, and ready to begin its next steps towards uh, flying towards the International Space Station. Commander Oleg Kononenko exiting the vehicle, returning to the International Space Station. David St. Jacques and Anne McLean enjoying these final moments before they close the hatch to the vehicle, where it will remain docked to the International Space Station for the next 14 hours until undocking tomorrow morning, uh, Central and Eastern Time. David St. Jacques initiating the command to officially close the hatch of the SpaceX Crew Dragon. This is the beginning end of the end for the Crew Dragon on its Demo 1 mission. And with that, the hatch, the hatch of the SpaceX Crew Dragon is closed. Hatch closed at 11.39 a.m. Central Time. The space station at the time was 253 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean, just west off the coast of Mexico.
station, Houston on two for David. Uh, we do see the PMA hatch closed. Uh, we were noticing in the video that there are some uh, loose threads on the closeout covers uh, from the uh, this is Mission Control Houston. You just witnessed the hatch to the pressurized mating adapter being closed. Uh, that was at 12, 12 p.m. Central Time, 1, 12 p.m. Eastern. Again, the hatch to the Dragon itself was closed at 11.39 a.m. Um, Central Time. This is the beginning of the end for uh, Crew Dragon's stay on board the International Space Station just less than 14 hours from now. Is scheduled to be undocked, actually closer to 13 at this point, uh, closer to 13 hours from now, uh, looking at 1.31 a.m. Central Time, 1.2.31 a.m. Eastern uh, for that undocking time. To tune into our live coverage and witness that event, uh, we'll go live at uh, 1 a.m. Central, 2 a.m. Eastern. Begin our coverage for the actual undocking of uh, Crew Dragon from the International Space Station. We'll take a break and come back on and show you uh, splashdown coverage. That splashdown time, uh, we're aiming for 7.45 a.m. Central, 8.45 a.m. Eastern.